Hi, and welcome to the latest of this Business Spotlight interview series. I'm delighted today to be joined by my, Matt Panish, Artistic Director at the Morecambe Fringe Festival. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm very well, Rob. Thank you very much. And how's your good self? Very well, thank you. Very well. Looking forward to hearing hearing about yourself and obviously uh, the business journey uh, so far. So with that in mind, do you want to give us a bit of background on yourself and you yeah, and, the, and the Morecambe Fringe Festival? As we are yes, talking. certainly. Uh, I, I washed up on Morecambe Shore uh, homeless <laughs> in 2016, actually. I'd got evicted from Manchester and like uh, lots of det detritus from the northwest, I ended up here in Morecambe. Right. Um, it was a brilliant place. I used to come here a lot as a child. Uh, my father um, helped construct the power station during the 80s, oh. so I used to spend all of my school holidays coming here. And um, a friend had a spare house, you know, th those were the heady days <laughs> after the crash uh, that he needed someone to look after. So I ended up in Morecambe's West End um, because, as I said, I'd been evicted from Manchester. And the first thing I noted was this place was built for entertainment, but there wasn't a sort of bricks and mortar producing theatre. Um, there weren't very, there weren't any theatre companies to join really. So, uh, me and my friend uh, Nick, who was a, a writer with the stage, and I was sat on the board of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival at the time and, and programmed for the Edinburgh Fringe. We decided to start the Morecambe Fringe just as a way of reconnecting the people to their heritage, if you like, right. and seeing how that would work out. And it's worked out really well. We invited um, sort of 20. Uh, people who work with theatre internationally or charities internationally or what have you just to walk around Morecambe during these 16 shows that I kind of handpicked from Edinburgh um, to showcase you know what Fringe could do mm. um, and their remit was uh, literally how do we reintroduce the performing arts to this town and embed it and we invited all the local arts organisations as well so it was a, a constant dialogue and out of that, everything else has flowed. So from that, we went from a two-day festival to the year after. It was a week long with two weekends. And I had um, handpicked again the acts that we had, but then they did like taster sessions mm -hmm. for the people to get involved with. The year after that, we went to two weeks and I ran workshops for the local population to uh, develop their own fringe shows. Uh, and then the year after that, we got to three weeks and we did. Um, we went up from 16 shows to about 50 shows and 10 of those shows were homegrown. So they're all people sort of developing their own work. And now what's happened is last year we opened a fringe in Carnforth and we opened a fringe in Barrow to run at the same time. So the idea is it will become a Bay Fringe festival um and yeah we catch the acts on their way up to edinburgh so they're happy to play really to get a review and to to test their work before they go up to edinburgh fringe i don't know if you know about the edinburgh fringe festival but I've been many I mean, it, time, so yeah i love it yeah. I've, yeah, right mm -hmm. yeah great it, it's the largest ticketed event in the world now it's actually overtaken the world cup and the olympics wow. uh, and it runs every year in the same place yeah, so it's yeah. not every four years somewhere you know a different country so i mean it is it's worth out now 140 million to the to the local government uh that's just to the local government yeah, it's yeah. worth 140 million there, there's hundreds of millions of pounds of of trade and impact that go on through that so the idea is to build that bay fringe out of that there's the poetry festival uh, that started a few years back that's punching really high now it's going on in september we've got pam airs on this year we've oh, got wow. mike harding on we've, we've got lem c say uh henry normal like it's, it's, it's a really high um high hitting festival um and also we've got now our um cic community theater company so i've got my little venue the playhouse on yorkshire street which right. is a front theater because i don't want i don't want the, the people who are working with me in acting to do um you know one night in a 300 seater place mm. what i want them to do is five or six nights in a 30 seater place because you learn your craft when you're on the stage so we're doing alien the musical at the moment right, which wow. It's our it's our delayed pantomime. Ripley is obviously the pantomime day. It's suitable for five year olds and above. I've got mm. to say, and it and it's really cute. So anyway, that, that's a potted history. I could go on. No, no, fantastic, fantastic. So, 
so the background so give you a little bit more about yourself and the background so you said you obviously turned up in 2016 what what were you you know have you always been involved in the arts and and that kind of stuff not really i i had a passion for it when i was uh younger but literally couldn't afford the audition fees um mm -hmm drama schools and so i decided to go to college and i went uh behind the camera so i did like a tv operations course right and i forgot about it all and it was when i moved to manchester in about 2003 i moved right. um uh i stood i saw a guy mike gary his name is actually supporting john cooper clark uh at the alhambra theater april 10th i'll drop that in because i'll be opening up the show there as well um uh, it was mike gary weirdly enough i saw him get up between two bands and recite some poetry and i thought can right. you do that is that allowed right. i used to write poetry and that was it i started doing performance poetry uh i toured um fringe festivals in north america canada america won a load of awards over there came back and tried to push that as a career really went up to the edinburgh fringe every year from 2009 right uh, and about 2015 i'll be honest with you the wheels fell off my wagon right. and uh, and i just kind of hit a brick wall and that's how i say it. i evicted yeah. from manchester ended up in morecambe what was really nice though and i think this was just synchronicity uh i've been focusing quite a lot on myself and uh, the things that i was writing mm. and then there was a whole community here um that i thought actually this is just a, a, a nice shift and it gave me something else to focus on. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, I mean, your passion comes through, but you know, what is it about what you do that you enjoy the most? I guess, is, is, is there one thing or is there a mixture of things? Do you know what? It's, it's, the whole, it's the whole thing. I stopped performing for a long time. Uh, and last week I got asked to do a night in Newcastle, which was the first poetry night I'd done for a while. And you know what? Um, uh, it it was fantastic. I love being back on a stage and having the audience in the palm of my hand, and it, it was just wonderful. Having said that, um, the the alien show that we've got, we've got our youngest cast member is six years old. She's been trying to get into dance and drama places around and about, and the money is quite restrictive. Mm. So the mother was thanking me, saying, "You know, we've we've got her in somewhere. This is the only place that would have her." Mm. And the fact that she's She's playing baby star in the show, and it's it's so cute, honestly, right. mate. It, it's really it's the cutest thing you've ever seen. But that is so heartwarming. Mm. It's just unbelievable. And helping people develop their own show. So I'm about to start running my Make Your Fringe Show course again. Seeing people go from um, sort of paper shakers, how we describe in the poetry world when you first yeah. read out your poem, to actually having the confidence on stage. Uh, that's been really beautiful. Seeing people's journeys is just incredible. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it must be. Yeah, that would, yeah. When when you get something back like that, um, makes a massive what you know world of difference to the to the commitment and the uh, and the and the motivation to to continue and and, and grow it it's know, and yeah. give more and more people that opportunity for sure. So obviously, it's quite a creative thing you're in, and obviously, it's fringe. And from a business perspective, what what is it, and how is it you've kind of been able to grow the beast or grow that you know what you've got so far and what the plans longer term and how does it all kind of work from that perspective it's interesting so from a business point of view everybody is is fundamentally got the mindset of there's no money in the arts yeah no money in the arts it's terrible it's da -da 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 -da. And, and to a certain level i'd absolutely agree with you however i think it's possible to carve a niche and what i'm trying to do with the work that I'm doing, it's sort of if you imagine a speedboat going going down the river, you've got a wake behind, and in that wake, I'm actually creating jobs. I think now we need to get the finances in for those jobs, but there was no creative industry here, and I hate doing that, but I'm going to do it anyway. There was no industry, so to speak, but we're actually um, getting to the point now where I think there is an industry. It just needs. Um, it just needs a rethink. It needs a rethink, definitely. Um, what we've been able to do on the money that we have is unbelievable. Um, and it is beginning to uh, show its rewards financially as well. Yeah. I won't say that it wasn't hard, you know. I mean, it, it certainly was. But I think from a business perspective, um, creativity has always been kind of looked down upon and being quite frivolous or, mm. or or it's an add-on to society rather than a necessity but yeah. actually it's a fundamental necessity we're all artists 
we're all artists when we go to school. Mm. You know, we all love drawing and painting. It's just until a teacher says, stop doing that, here's some maths, and <laughs> it gets knocked out of you. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, I, I think it needs a reevaluation on that front, but I'm trying to be the proof that there is an industry here that can work as well, maybe a, a new dynamic and a new way of looking at it and thinking yeah, about yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you would argue that the Edinburgh Fringe now is is big business, right? It's it's you know it's it's where... a perfect example, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that started off with with nine nine uh, companies. Yeah, that it was the international festival to reunite Europe after after the yeah. war, so spread culture. And these, you know, seven Scottish companies and two English companies said, can we join in? And they went, no. So, so they started their own. And that's how the Fringe Festival yeah. started. Yeah. And now there's 4,000 shows that go there a year. It's a massive thing. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. So um, so thinking about that and going forward, so, you know, what, what you mentioned briefly about the maybe the vision for a bay you know bay festival uh, fringe festival is is that the is that the dream is that the is that what, what you're looking to achieve and if you are how how do you see that working and what do you think the challenges are in achieving that yeah I th well I, th I think it's working um uh, we're making the path as we walk it mm. is is how I would describe that and actually as far as the bay fringe goes what we have is that beautiful train link yeah. from barrow uh, to Morecambe, you know, and it is a gorgeous train journey. And so that's what I'm trying to use to be the connector. Yeah. So we're also starting poetry nights along the, that um, train line as well. Right. There are also some poetry nights that, that are already in existence. For example, Word Arium, uh, which runs last Wednesday of the month in Lancaster. Mm. Uh, there's a night that started the first Monday of the month in Barrow. What well, I'm going to try and introduce to those guys, I run a night second Saturday uh, of the month at the playhouse um what i'm trying to do is is open up some more nights al along that train line mm. and then have a monthly meetup uh, so that everybody jumps on the train we all meet up somewhere we walk yeah. around we write some poems we have a beer we right. get back air our work and, and, and so on so so there's that the bay fringe there um will work like that as well jumping on the train calling it the festival express having comedians on the train that kind of thing um and really no tourist is going to come and spend a week in Morecambe, being my driver, but I think they will spend a week on the bay. Mm. I, like, I do think that you've got lovely little towns along that road that aren't too expensive. Sure. Uh, it will be the biggest fringe in the world uh, just by geographical reach. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah absolutely but yeah i don't see i don't see that many challenges really it's just about getting people excited and the growth in morecambe like the, the morecambe fringe has grown 625 percent you yeah. know so i think that the hunger there uh, and so on uh what we need to do is tell people about it so we are developing a tv wing as well i'm doing a tv documentary uh taking my um college course finally of some use right uh, yeah, sorry that that was kind of a, a business diversion brought about by COVID, because my playhouse is so small. Right. I thought right it would be a TV studio, um, and and honestly, the cost of equipment in the TV world now is when I left college, um, for for five thousand pounds, I've bought two cameras that are broadcast quality, Netflix approved, etc. Whereas, whereas, honestly, when I left college, that wouldn't have covered the film for, no. for a 60 kilometer film, you know, let alone mm -hmm. the cameras and the equipment. Yeah, so so we're doing a couple of documentaries to try and get the word out there, I either put them on Amazon or via the BBC or whatever. Let's see how that works. What we've got now. Perfect. Okay, great stuff. And yeah, I, I think, yeah, like I say, it's, is it about the... Um... It's about the exposure and just and just generating. So from a business perspective, it's that kind of almost lead generation piece, isn't it? Of just getting people aware of what you're doing and, and getting them. It is. It is. And also uh, lead generation, also kind of replicating it. So the idea was that this would become not a blueprint because the idea of a blueprint, I think, is quite fixed, mm. but a model that you could export. So, so um, the West End of Morecambe is in what they call the big local area i don't know if you're, you're aware of that there's what what they did was i think in 2007 noticed that that uh most 
most of the people who applied for lottery funding grants were moneyed middle classes from right. metropolitan areas in Sydney. And most of the people who paid the money on the lottery uh, were in the poorest areas in the country. Right, right. So they weren't benefiting from the, from the money. So so what the lottery did, and I thought this was brilliant, was they found the 150 poorest wards in the country right. and they gave them a million pound each to spend on improving their area. And so there's an organisation called the West End Million in the right. West End of Morecambe who were coming towards the end of their 10 years, I think they had to mm. spend this. Um, now, uh, the idea was I... I'm I'm not saying that every single one of the poorest wards in the country doesn't have a comedy club in it, mm. but I would bet that 80% of them don't or 90% or 95% of them don't. And so the another idea of this was to actually run this as a model, see if it works and export it to other areas right. and then connect those areas. So we're developing our community plays Dover or Folkestone or Margate mm. uh, who are these other deprived cities and actually exchange our work so you get a conversation happening between yeah. you know a cultural communication or whatever I hate sounding like an arts council application form sorry yeah, right. uh, cultural communication between the towns um but, but yeah so um we're actually I'm talking to some Someone on Monday regard, who are looking at artistic regeneration prospects and they're looking at what we've done in Morecambe and possibly um, using some of those strategies yeah. down there. So that's interesting. I guess um, thinking about kind of exposure with with what potentially plan to come to Morecambe over the next few years, that's uh, that could be quite a big opportunity as well in terms of you know highlighting the uh, the the it's, area and, and the benefits and 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 that side of the the community as well yeah absolutely well with the eden project who, who eden communities came on board and supported our um the poetry festival did an anthology right. last uh, and so they wrote the forward for that and they supported that eden have been absolutely brilliant but with best will in the world um they're they're a small part of a 24-hour day if anyone's mm -hmm. coming to visit yeah, yeah. so need an entertainment economy around it and i think you know the victorians had it right with morecambe we had um i, I helped organize hawkwind uh the the rock band from the 60s oh, yeah. and of which i'm a massive fan for right. this glow you know hippie hair and everything <laughs> but uh um hawkwind did uh their hawk easter festival at the Alhambra Theatre, which kind of proved that that was a venue that could work again. And you had 600 fans suddenly in the West End spending money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the whole place came to life. Yorkshire Street came to life. Um, and it was built around the Alhambra. The Alhambra is the beating heart of the West End, and it should mm. feed into all of these mini businesses. Now, Eden's got the potential to do that as well, but we need the businesses and the other entertainments yeah. there. Otherwise, what will happen is uh, outside people will come in and invest it. If it's already happening, then outside investors will invest it in it and grow it. Yeah, but yeah. if it's not happening, then they'll come in and do it themselves and the profits will go out. Yeah, so it's yeah. trying to um, try um, councils, et cetera, who, who we're in dialogue with to actually realise that and businesses to realise that, that yeah. if they want to, to be here, invest now. Yeah. yeah. It needs a full, yeah. Yeah, a full kind of strategy behind the whole thing, doesn't it? And, uh, it really does. The big worry for me is that, and it's happened to Leith in Edinburgh as well, is that it becomes an Airbnb desert. The, the West End of Morecambe becomes an Airbnb desert because landlords will be offered 300% of the mortgage that they paid. Clear off out, Airbnbs come in. What's going to happen to the local population? Brilliant if, and this should have happened a couple of years ago, they mitigate against their own success. Which is, wouldn't this be wonderful? It could, if it could be the first regeneration project that didn't end up with an exodus of poor people. Yeah. If we could actually, because gentrification's happening, all problem. It's been there for thousands of years. Yeah. Um. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually figure out a model that stopped that from having from happening and export that to the world? Because I think it'd be worth exporting. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Sorry, mate. I'm an idealist. <laughs> no but i think it's you know like you say you, if you don't learn from what's happened in the past then you know you, you're failing aren't you do you know what i mean you've got to be looking yeah. at, like i say it's uh yeah i know you refer you well and yeah it, leith was obviously quite a 
quite a rundown part of the, you know, they obviously they invested in the docks and obviously put the QE2 there and uh, oh, the Britannia, sorry, the yeah. yacht and all that kind of stuff. But like you say, if people then only go, yeah, it's only, it's only, it's only relevant uh, when, and then obviously Edinburgh is an Airbnb, you know, people make the most of it at the festival time and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to get the balance yeah. for, for, for everyone benefiting from yeah. something. I mean, not just not just the people that can afford to to benefit in the short term so yeah no interesting points cool okay and then just thinking about um obviously you know you're creating this business and you've been working on it in 2016 what would be say your biggest learnings have been so far as a business owner uh, uh, the biggest learning um to be honest i think uh Keep going. Is, is if you've got a vision, you've just got to keep at it and not let anybody take away your focus from that. And it is. It does feel sometimes as if you're pushing your Sisyphus, pushing that boulder up that hill. Yeah. There's lots of distractions. There's lots of people telling you to stop what you're doing for your own health, if if yeah. nothing else. But um, actually, just keep on going. You need that blind mindset. And if it doesn't work, also, you need to say, "All right, fine. It's not worked. I'll do something else." Because Lots of lots of this project has been about me throwing ideas against the wall and seeing which ones stick. But all of the ideas are in, interconnected. They're all going in the same direction. There are other threads that I've not developed yet because I haven't had the financial resources to, or mm -hmm. I haven't had the time to, the human collateral to, mm -hmm. uh, resources to, uh, and so on. So, But I'd say, yeah, a single-minded vision and, and the tenacity to just keep at it. Yeah, so clarity, clarity is absolutely vital, right? In terms of, yeah, knowing, yeah. knowing where you want that, that end game, start with the end in mind, as we say. So, you know, if, know what you're doing, know why you're doing it, and be yeah. happy doing it. You know, yeah. why? Yeah, the why, yeah, is a, is a, yeah, as is even more important than than the how and the what. It, uh, it kind of defines you. Yeah. The, the why, I think, it, it really does define you, and and that was it for me because I'd spent all of that time focusing on myself uh, actually focusing on a community just gave me uh, an extra I knew who I was doing it for and it wasn't me and that yeah. really really helped me along that really helped me through some dark times yeah um, cool. you know and I've got to say everything seems to be you know touching all of the wood I can see around me everything seems to be turning to green you know yeah. it's looking quite beautiful ahead yeah right fantastic I mean, you kind of, I was going to ask you about the best advice for someone starting up in business. Would, would they be the same things or anything else you'd want to? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, well, try and find the right people around you as, as well, because yeah. that's what, what's taken a long time um, for me to find is the right team. And they'll become attracted to you mm -hmm. and they'll start joining in with you if they can share in your vision. Yeah. Uh, if they can see it as well, then they become part of it. So the West End Players is now a CIC. We've got four directors, which just in itself uh, was, was an unburdening of problems, but it's also four other viewpoints and skill sets. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely fantastic, uh, which have enabled us to start winning contracts. Like uh, I was at Blackpool yesterday uh, working with Showtime Museum, Showtown Museum, sorry. Mm. Um delivering stand-up comedy courses for people who are socially isolated and right. so on. Now, the first down payment of that contract paid the rent on the Playhouse till November. You right. know, so so it, all, of the, all of that kind of business yeah. is happening. But yeah, um, try and get the right people around you and don't be afraid if they suddenly turn around and say, this isn't for me and do something else as well, even in yeah. the same area. Because yeah. you you inspire people as well by uh, sharing your ideas. And what, so yeah. when you talk about bringing the right people in, what what is it especially about when you are looking to bring those in? What what are you actually looking for in those people? What's important? Shared vision, yeah. um, uh, but actually really clear uh, reward, uh, really clear about what they want to get out of yeah. uh, everything. Sure. Um, and because it's not only money, it it sometimes it's not only money. So, for example, the, the artists that are coming up and doing the fringe, they tend to lose two or three hundred pounds mm -hmm. when they do the Morecambe fringe, but they're doing it before the Edinburgh fringe. And if anyone's not doing Edinburgh, I have a phone conversation with them and explain this. There right. is, you know, 
you're you're coming to a very deprived and i hate doing that but deprived yeah. area etc you're not going to get a load of money in your bucket you are going to get a review yeah uh, and you're going to get a chance to go for your show so losing 200 pounds if you're spending ten thousand pounds doing edinburgh yeah is a drop in the ocean but you're going up with a fresh review which yeah. review in edinburgh have dropped by 40 percent over the last 10 years right. uh, the numbers have increased so that becomes valuable and a chance to go through the show is really good now i tend to have about 80 percent returning shows at the morecambe fringe right even the show is growing uh, sorry the fringe is growing all the time right. so i know in myself that those people even though they're losing money are getting something out of it that's valuable to them yeah. um so, yeah. i think really be clear on what what it is and help people decide what it is that they want yeah no, my, my thing about business actually is is um there's it's nice to be nice there yeah. is a sweet spot where everybody wins and nobody loses and you can find that spot if everybody's really honest with each other and that's what i kind of try and strive for uh, all the time there are two rules in business number one be nice number two that's it <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, yeah, paying it forward and all those kind of things make a massive difference in terms of, um, you know, not all, you know, looking out to how you can help rather than just always trying to see what you can take is, is a massive thing when it comes to growing a business and people wanting to work alongside and work with you, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So um, it, it really is. And, you know, helping helping as many people as you can and they yeah. will help you as well. I mean, it's, there's a there's a lot of mutual support out there, which yeah. is really lovely you know and that needs yeah. to be grown no definitely definitely brilliant okay and then intrigued by this question um what inspires you because you seem you know obviously you're very passionate about what you do so what 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 inspires you to do what you're doing and what you've done over the last few years all of the above i mean i um you always say if you're a performer you know there's there's an inbuilt need for applause yeah. and uh, an inbuilt need for um you know uh, a reason to exist <laughs> need to be loved or what have you yeah. uh, and i suppose that that was true of me when when i got on stage i love the applause and i love all of that kind of stuff um and then that so developed i think as i've developed as a human being and i will say that morecambe's probably down a down a lot of my development as a human being is probably down to my experiences in more i've gone from self-centered to, to yeah. quite yeah uh that's that's the inspiration is seeing it all come to life and knowing that you're um oh there's someone in business who, who said this the other day and it, it was great you're not a business owner you're a steward and if you look at stewarding uh, your business and the idea that you are, so, you know, this was always being built to be passed on. Yeah. You know, people who started Edinburgh aren't still in control of Edinburgh. No. You know, not at all. Um, so it, it's it's that building to pass it on and stewarding your ideas and hopefully leaving the world a better place than you found it. Brilliant. No, it's a fantastic. Yeah, no, yeah, I think it's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, absolutely. If, you know, if you have that mindset, then you're going to make the you make the decisions for the long term rather than just those short term. And that's absolutely that's how you build it. Short termism, I think, is is our one of our major failures, and it's been compounded by the speed of information. Yeah, because we're all reacting because we're getting lots of information, so it's very hard to think of the long term. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just need a you need a vision and a plan, and then you can you can always tailor it to that and make sure that those decisions are, are based on the long term as well. But no, perfect. Hey, good stuff. So, and finally, um, any I mean, obviously you've mentioned a couple of things going on, but you know, if people want to find out more about the fringe itself in general, where's the best places to to go and search and find online? Yeah, well, I mean, literally, just contact me, Matt Panish. <laughs> um, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, in touch uh, i'm always happy to chat with folks we've got openings up we're taking in student interns uh hopefully and, and that's on on the tv front sometimes um uh people who want to uh act develop their acting yeah. careers that, do that anything just just get in touch and we'll yeah. have a chat great stuff well, thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Um, you yeah, know, I've been really interested to find out what you've done so far, and I wish you all the best in you. growing and developing the fringe in the Bay Area over the next few years. 
thank you very much indeed. Look forward to seeing you at the shows. Indeed. I look forward to coming. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.